Chapter Twenty Three. It was Bumblebee Tuna, the solid white in the three-ounce cans with the pop-top lids, very carefully wrapped in a plastic bag that he rakishly dangled between his teeth. Jean Claude set it down and said, "Where's the kitten?" He is getting a bath," I said, right next door. An actual bath," he said. "Bath is water." I nodded grimly. It had to be done. Jean Claude seemed to shudder. "I do see your point. We would have to attempt to return them to gold." But it seems such a torture for one so young, an actual bath," he said, shaking his head. He flicked at the tuna. "Monsieur, I beg you to take this tuna as simply a gift, an additional bonus to cover your time and your personal genius. The lobster will come on my word of honor in less than a week." I prefer to do business," I said. "C O D. You would rather have God than a beautiful lobster." I looked at him flatly and said, "Never mind." I tapped on the novel. Has anyone read it? I looked at the faces. I depict the wrong group. It's an excellent story," I said. The book's about stealing a necklace and pulling a, Sam, Sam, Sam. Sue arrived in a hurry, followed by Bridget with kitten in mouth. He isn't Louis. He couldn't be Louis. They leapt to the blotter and, very gently, Bridget set Louis or Fluffer to rest on the top of the novel. The kid looked cranky. And terribly sleepy, and totally black. In fact, even blacker because he was clean. He shone in the lamplight as perfectly burnished as natural ebony. Look, she said. See. Jean Claude was astonished. There must be an error.、Uh, possibly somebody. Glancing at Bridget, decided to switch him with some little mutt. Oh, somebody switched him, all right. I looked at the circle of faces. You want to know who? Algernon Beaumont. That's who switched him. And John O'Shaughnessy cooked up the plot. It's the plot of Moonshot. I said to them, practically down to the commas. I tapped at the book. Which disturbed little Fluffer, who started to mew. Bridget cradled him tenderly. Slasher was mad. I'm beginning to hate this, he said. I am totally hating this story. I grinned at him. Don't. There's a wonderful ending for everyone here. Yeah. How does that go? Slasher was tense and ready to rumble. Buster said, "Hey, just cool it and listen." He turned to me. How? Because Algernon Beaumont still has the kitten. He never lost him. Louis at home, and your handsome roommate, I babbled to Bridget, is really a genius and isn't a thief. But I always knew that," she said. He lies and he makes up stories, but that's what he does. Like you mean he writes fiction, I said. And fiction, she said with conviction, is nothing but lies. Like you made up a story and then you get paid. And he made up a winner, I said to her. Listen, the plot he concocted went something like this. In exchange for alerting the Beaumont family to Caspar Gutless's hideous plan, he suggested they join him in pulling a switch. They'd pretend that the kitten was actually missing. 
they'd call up the papers and post a reward. Then, a day or two later, O'Shaughnessy figured, he'd bring little Fluffer to Gutless's house and say he was Louie, and Louie'd been dyed, but the dye would grow out in a couple of weeks. In exchange for the kitten, he'd get Mr. Gutless to give him a lease for the next thirty years, and the lease would be binding. You see what I mean? Oh, I got it! I got it! Spike was delighted. A wonderful story. An excellent plot. And of course, he'd have said it was permanent dye, so that Gutless would just have to wait and wait and wait and wait. Sue was dancing in circles. And wait and wait, Buster added and laughed. Oh, goodness, I love it! Bridget was merry. And meanwhile, of course, we'd be safe in our house like forever and ever. She cuddled the kid and then suddenly darkened. But hold it, she said. If he actually gives little Fluffer to Gutless, I'll lose little Fluffer. I said, but you won't. I looked up at the clock. It was 9.17. Because just about now, I said, Sergeant Rafferty, 7th Precinct, is raiding the house. They looked up at me stupidly. Gutless's house. I sent him an email, I said. A strictly anonymous email from Friend of the Cats. Come here, take a look. See what I mean? I pulled up the sense from my column of emails and showed them the letter I had written at dawn. From Sam at SamTheCat.com Date Monday, December 13th, 5.27 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. To Rafferty, J.Q. at 7thPrecinct.com Subject, Dangerous Killer. Sergeant Rafferty, Herman Hench, wanted for killing endangered species, will be at the mansion of Casper Gutless on Monday evening at 9 p.m., you will find all the evidence right in the mansion. The wanton destruction of rare species, the forced enslavement of rare birds, and the man who possesses them, Casper Gutless, should also be busted according to law. Yours sincerely, Friend of the Cats. Oh, Sam, that's sensational. Sue was aglow. And you're certain they're doing it? Truly, for sure. I checked it with Gomez. I looked at Jean-Claude. So I owe him a dinner, and that's why I asked. So is everyone happy? I looked at the crowd. Bridget was frowning. Her blue eyes blazed. So how does that help me? Because, I said firmly, with Gutless in jail for the next hundred years, you can keep your apartment and little Fluffer. She thought for a moment, and then she said, Oh. And then she said, Oh. And then she said, Oh. And enfolded the kitten as Buster looked on. He said, Beautiful going. The kitten looked up and said, Horsey, horsey. And then he said, Dad? Bridget and Buster were suddenly glancing those mutual glances that sparkle with love and that never bode well for a gambler's future. Slasher said suddenly, Jimmy's okay? Like, is that what you're saying? I nodded. Uh-huh. So, is everyone happy? They thought it over. Wilmer checked Buster. We really got bugs? Buster was nodding. Bridget was smiling. The kitten was purring. Jean-Claude was content. Even Slasher was happy. 
it started to snow.